If you're like me and you're newer to the world of pursuing IT certifications, then this video is for you. As you may know, there are three different exams one can take to become a Cisco Certified Support Technician. There's the CCST Networking, Cybersecurity, or IT Support exams. Getting started with the CCST Networking exam can feel daunting, especially if you're just starting out in IT. Here are five topics from the exam simplified for you and I to be able to understand better. Think of a network like a digital conversation between devices. And inside that network, there are devices that play one of two roles. You've got clients that ask for things like your phone or your laptop, and then you have servers that provide them with that answer, like a website or your printer. Sometimes these devices are in the same room or the same building, and that would be called a local area network or a LAN. And in the case where devices are spread across multiple buildings or even countries, we would call that a wide area network, just like the internet. When your browser loads a website, it is using a protocol named HTTP. And when your computer knows if a message got delivered properly, that's TCP at work. And how your computer knows where to send those messages, that's IP doing its job. The OSI model is an example of an important framework that breaks down that protocol process into seven layers. It's like having a roadmap for how to design and troubleshoot your networks. Throughout your entire networking journey, you are going to be referencing the different types of network devices and cables. This exam covers hardware devices like routers that connect your network to the internet, or switches that help devices inside a network talk to each other, or an access point that gives you access to Wi-Fi, especially like that in your home network. There are a number of cables that can run devices. There's the standard fast and reliable ethernet cable, while there's also the fiber optic cables that are used for bigger setups as they use actual light instead of electricity to move data. Now, how do all of these devices know where to actually send things? They communicate using IP addresses. Every device on a network has an IP address. Think of it as like a digital home address, but for your device. IPv4 is the classic version, while IPv6 is becoming more common as more devices are online. Most addresses look something like this. This is an IPv4 address. And now there's a newer, longer version called IPv6. And behind the scenes, there's also things like subnet masks and gateways helping organize the network. It's kind of like sorting mail into neighborhoods and figuring out which post office to send it through. And finally, there are all kinds of threats out there. Malware, phishing emails, or even DDoS attacks where people try and crash a network and flood it to cause chaos. To fight back, we use tools like firewalls to block unwanted traffic, encryption to scramble the data so only the right person can read it, and VPNs to create private tunnels through the internet. To learn more about the topics highlighted in this video, you can check out the Cisco Networking Academy's CCST courses at the link below. And as you continue on your journey, possibly with the CCNA, you can check out Cisco U's free tutorials at the link below as well.